Hi and welcome to the very strange world of Stupid Robot Fighting League. What you're looking at is the full version of Stupid Robot Fighting League and what we've done is we've shrunk it to a desktop size uh, that you can build at home just with hot glue, a banana box and a cardboard tube and some plastic. So you're looking at the top there and the parts list uh, you can see listed on the left and right on the left is millimeters and on the right is inches for our American friends um, just to get a good idea of uh, how it's put together I've just uh, taken some photos for you there uh, please excuse the mess uh, just above it but uh, I'm messy there's a the cardboard tube and you can see that it's split um, I've actually had to cut it twice to leave an opening Right, so here I am. I am stripping the banana box for all of its goodies. Try not to bend or buckle the cardboard. You can see I got uh, quite a few bits out of that. And what I'm doing here is I'm trimming the end. And uh, what I've done is I have marked out this piece of banana box in 30 millimeter um, pieces. This is a demonstration of how I join because everything pretty much is double, length, uh, double thickness. I created strength. Uh, this is a demonstration of how I actually um, go about that. All of these pieces here are double thickness. They're all uh, hot glued together. And uh, you can see here I'm having a bit of difficulty because I'm cutting through hot glue. Always trim your ends before you uh, measure out. Um, it just means that the ends are nice and uh, easy to glue to and they're not just sort of uh, bendy. Uh, one thing I have found is when you're cutting, that uh, you should rather than push down hard onto the cardboard and try and cut it um, just use gentle strokes to cut it um, and uh, it'll make it through eventually so here notice I'm using the ruler to press down uh, that means that I'm not um, sort of making the cardboard kink so here I'm just trying to get as many pieces as I, as I can out these will be the 200 millimeter um, pieces and um, so what you're looking at here is I'm starting to build the sides and uh, if you notice those very short pieces there that I'm attaching those are just the off cuts always save your off cuts and uh, they're, they'll be useful for the bracing pieces uh, as you can see I'm using the square as well that square is very handy um, it just stops the whole thing end up being really out of uh, out of skew with be crooked uh, so what I'm doing here for context is I'm showing you that this uh, will be the setup for one side of the um, of the actual frame. We call the frame the rectagon. I should have said that earlier. So here I'm uh, finishing off a side using the ruler again to press down rather than putting a whole lot of thumbprints dents in the side. See, I'm um, using that brace piece again, which is just an off cut. You don't have to measure those. And uh, pressing down on the ruler and finishing off one whole side. There we go. So the longer parts are the uprights. Okay, uh, you see that one piece that I'm putting under the square? It, that helps the square stay up so it uh, doesn't slide underneath the part that it's trying to um, uh, that it's trying to keep square. Otherwise, it just slides under it and it doesn't really help at all. So that's what that extra piece is underneath the square for. So I've really spread this, uh, sped up this part just for another demo of the uh, the other side of the frame or what we call the rectagon using the ruler again to press down and finishing off the other side Woohoo! look at me I'm going like real fast go me okay so now what we're doing is we're joining one of the sides to the uh, the first cross member that cross member is 200 millimeters uh, across and uh, because there's uh, plenty of thickness on the side it's a uh, three actually hang on how many pieces it's uh, yeah uh, four pieces wide including the braces that means that there's plenty to glue to so I'm just gluing the uh, the top cross members on now I didn't use bother using the square or anything for this because pretty much everything else hopefully should be square as you can see there's uh, a bit of movement in that uh, but um, you'll see later on that I actually put in a, an additional brace uh, give you a bit of a show so that, this here um, all I did was uh, pop it on top and use a green pen to measure out the piece and uh, it, it obviously is going to be 200 anyway but this is a single thickness piece and uh, so I glue that on 
and what that does is that strengthens the top cross member bars um, because um, they were going to kink with all the weight coming down on them but now that there's a piece of cardboard on its side which is a lot stronger and it uh, it really helps strengthen it um, where the uh, where the concrete uh, not concrete cardboard tube goes across so uh, yeah that really strengthened the whole thing up and as you can see here if you watch I'm gluing across then what I do is I get the hot glue tip and smooth out the glue now I'm marking the middle this is along the top and now watch this this is uh, how I worked out to um, make a, uh, a straight cut along a tube was just to put a piece of wood along it so I'm cutting this twice because when you do this cut it collapses in on itself due to the tension and the second cut is to make an opening now the opening see that will have this uh, although it will be rounded on the top um, so notice the difference what you want is that rounded version and uh, so this is what will actually hold up the stupid robots so as you can see it just pops inside the tube but still slides back and forth and that uh, that cardboard tube is strong enough to uh, hold everything up now this wasn't even measured I just sort of held it up and and that is going to hold in the cardboard tube and stop it from rolling what I should have done is actually um, glued the back the, the bottom part of it first and then glued the side parts but uh, yeah I sorted that out afterwards but um, that actually took a while to dry it was quite frustrating so all I did was um, mark the tube um, along the whole length of the frame and then just uh, cut it to length and so what I'm doing here is preparing some side supports for the cardboard tube and um, that's just again uh, out of off cuts I, all I did was measure them at about uh, I think 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters long and uh, so that just uh, helps everything sit in place Okay, this cardboard piece here is an end stop for the cardboard tube and I just hot glue that on uh, I didn't measure it I just sort of held it up and then drew it and this thing here is a wedge so it uh, all you do is uh, double it up and then just slot it in there and it holds the um, cardboard tube in place and because of gravity it doesn't come out right here is those uh, plastic things made from an ice cream container lid again and so you've got both of those in there and we're all set up for the fight Woohoo! yeah you're finished okay so this is um, uh, the second test I've ever done with it and uh, you can see that um, I'm going to do another video for the actual setup for the stupid robots and how to um, how to operate them uh, so as you can see there I'm really smashing in the um, the, the other stupid robot there and uh, I just whacked off my own head so um, all of the strings are held in place uh, just by friction so if they let go too much then all you need to do is put a dab of hot glue on the end of the strings so this time I lay in a bit heavier and uh, you'll see what happens in the end but anyway um, so you've got the basics thank you so much for watching and uh, thanks to Make Magazine for supporting Stupid Robot Fighting and uh, please uh, let us know um, how you get on with this project and uh, I'd love to see some videos of some fights. Yeah, the head fell off. <laughs>